Hey, we're going to do another video. We're going to talk about the, the other two cases, and, and I haven't mentioned it for a while, but when we have systems of linear equations, well, there's three cases. Most of the time, we get one intersection. We get that one point. We've been working on that exclusively. But we also had two other cases. We had the case where our lines are parallel. We don't get an intersection. Or when we have exactly the same line, we get a constant intersection at every single point because you have the same line. They're overlaid on top of one another. We're going to discover what that looks like algebraically without having to craft it. So these are going to look weird. If you are solving for a number and you get a nut like x equals number, y equals number, you are in case one. You're finding the one solution. The cases where we have no solution or infinite solutions look strange. You're going to eliminate basically all of your variables here when you do the substitution method or elimination method which comes later. But it's going to look strange. So if you're seeing stuff that doesn't look strange, like you actually get numbers, you're in case one. You're getting an actual solution. If not, we're probably no solution or infinite solutions. Let me show you how it looks. So we're going to do this with substitution method. Now right off the bat, I would tell you that once you cover elimination method, once we talk about that, I'd probably do that example with elimination method. Same thing here. But because I want to practice substitution a little bit more with you, we're going to do the substitution method. So let's pick one of these equations that we can solve for one variable. I want to pick this one, and I'm going to solve this for the variable x. Why? Because it looks good to me. It looks easy. So I'm going to solve this for x. If we divide both sides by 2, that means everything by 2 we get negative y plus 2. That right there lets me substitute for x in the previous equation, so in the other equation. So if these x's are the same, saying I'm looking for where these cross, I want my x's to be the same at that point. They have to be. If our lines are equal at that point, then our x's also have to be equal. Let's let them be equal. So this becomes not 3x, but 3, negative y plus 2. Plus 3, y equals 9. So instead of this x, I'm replacing with what x is equal to. And then we're going to distribute and we're going to, oh man, we're going to divide some of the terms. What happens? Our y's disappear. And we get 6 equals 9. If that doesn't make any sense, you're absolutely right. Does it ever make any sense that 6 equals 9? Is 6 ever equal to, to 9? And the answer is no. So if you remove all your variables, if, if they eliminate out of your problem and you get an, a nonsense statement, a not true statement, this says 6 is not equal to 9, ever. There's never a case when 6 ever equals 9, ever. There's no solution. Oh, there's no solution to this. This is when you get no solution. So if you still have variables in your problem, you are going to have uh, the case where you get one solution, that, that, one, that one intersection. But if you eliminate your variables and you get a nonsense statement, this is when you get no solution. This is never true. 6 is never equal to 9. There's no variables. There's no way to make them true. No solution. Let's consider the next one. I would probably solve this for b, even though it's got a negative. I'd add the b and subtract the 6. That gives us something that we can substitute in, on, in the other equation. So we're letting our b's be the same here. So let's put this in for here. So negative 4a, no problem, plus 2. Now remember, I'm not teaching you a substitution method right now. I've already, I've already taught that to you. We're just dealing with the no solution, infinite solution, so you can see what they look like one time. So we've solved the one equation for one variable. We're calling the variables the same. That lets us do a substitution. So instead of b, I'm putting what b is equal to. That's 2a minus 6. I'll distribute. I'll com Whoa, I'll combine some like terms. Now look what happens. Our a's are gone. But we get something that says negative 12 equals negative 12. 
Look how similar these examples are. In both cases, we solved for a variable, we did our substitution, we worked it down, our variables disappeared, and our variables disappeared. But what we're left with is the interpretation of whether we have no solution or infinite solutions. If you have this case where these numbers are never the same, then your lines are never going to intersect, ever. They're nev there's never a point where our y coordinates are the same or x coordinates are the same. They're parallel. They're parallel lines and there's no solution. So you can actually interpret that. There's no solution. This means that you're going to have parallel lines. Now look at the other one. We solve for a variable. We did our substitution. Our variables disappeared. We have, but now we have something that, well, think about that. Negative 12 equals 12. Is that true? Is it always true? Is there ever a case where it's not true? This says no matter what, you're going to be equal on both sides. No matter what points you plug in, you're going to be equal on both sides. This is infinite solution. So it's not that our variables disappear that gives us our answer. It's an interpretation. If you get a nonsense statement, something that's never equal, that's no solution. If you get an always true statement, something that is equal on both sides, that's infinite solutions. Furthermore, in order to get infinite solutions with two lines, those lines would have to be wired on top of each other. They'd have to be identical lines, and that's exactly what this is saying. Infinite solutions comes from the fact that we had identical lines to start with. I don't know if you remember this, but I said at the beginning, is there ever a case where you could have identical lines and not know it? Those are identical lines, and you can actually prove it. If you solve, we solve this one for b. We solve this one for b, we get 2a minus 6. If you take this and solve it for b, it doesn't look like it, but You have exactly the same line. They can look different because of the forms of our, of our functions that we have, the forms of our lines. But this line and that line are identical. So no wonder we got the same thing on both sides all the time. They're the same line. You set them equal to each other and it says, yeah, they're equal. Obviously, they're the same line. That's interesting. So our two cases that aren't just one answer, in those two cases, your variables are going to disappear. In both cases. But what happens is, for no solution, you're going to have numbers that aren't equal. For infinite solutions, you have numbers that are equal. No solution means you have parallel lines. They never cross. Infinite solutions mean you have the same line. They cross all the time. They intersect all, at every point. That's the idea. Look through this a couple times before you move on. Make sure you understand the interplay between not equal numbers, no solution, equal numbers, infinite solutions. Parallel lines versus identical lines. I'll see you for the next video when we do some applications of substitution method on some word problems. Have a great day.